Hey guys, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. If it's your first time on the channel, welcome on this channel. Like I said, you find some trucking issue news, reviews, things like that. Wait a minute, like I just said, first time I said it. <sighs> Crazy day today. Um, this is your first time live stream, that's what I meant to say. Live streams where I interact with the audience, we go for about an hour, check it out if you want to see the whole thing. You do a podcast too, of course, you know, I've heard people doing that as well. In that, you just hit play. I'm not really showing you a whole lot. Doing a lot of talking. So sit back, relax, pop top like I am doing. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about some truck stuff. We had the news this morning that Nikolai has a new partner. Yes, General Motors is going to invest $2 billion in Nikolai. They're going to build the Badger, which is a truck you saw in the thumbnail. And they're going to produce that. And they're going to take and look at their manufacturing and help mass market it and help them actually be in the marketplace. GM is going to get access to the um, technology that Nikolai has. And they can work on the class seven and class eight semis that they're using hydrogen fuel cells for overseas. Also, GM's going to put their Ultium battery in Nikolai Badger, and uh, that'll be the battery EV version. But then they'll use, or maybe use, or combine their own technology with hydrogen fuel cells. They currently have the ZH2, which is a hydrogen fuel cell uh, Colorado they use in experimental testing with the military, and they use Nikolai's hydrogen fuel cell technology to, well, build another better vehicle. So exciting news for them. Their stock price was up, uh, Jesus, they had a huge day, up like, I don't know, probably 30 40%. Big numbers. I was following that today. I see how the stock market reacted to that because people like these uh, test the wannabe kind of companies. So a lot of big news there. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the GM finally gets out of it um, besides just building a truck. Um, it's kind of not quite clear exactly what they're going to get out of it. They are going to get EV credits, though. So every Nikolai's badge is getting sold. It's an EV credit, which GM will then have at their disposal to not pay cafe fines, or they can sell them. If they can sell the EV credits, and if they sell those credits, they will make some money, which is one of the reasons why people think Tesla is, that's the only way they're staying afloat, is because their EV credits, they keep selling those. So EV credit marketplace is huge, huge, I'm telling you. So I don't know. It, it'll be interesting. Uh, Philip is here. Of course, Philip's here. Yeah, I, I know they don't. They, but they talked about it, Philip. Um, they, uh, in their press releases, they offering two versions, a battery V and a fuel cell. And so it's, I'm not sure. I was looking at that stuff, trying to figure out what's exactly going on. Um, Philip knows I'm not quite as versed in EV truck world as I probably need to be. And I am trying to get more versed in it. Huh, that's interesting. So maybe they are going to use a fuel cell. So basically... Fuel cell and the Ultium battery GM. So that means the Nikolai is going to have the cool badge. I guess. Well, I thought it was interesting too was that they wanted GM announced Nikolai is going to stay an independent company and they have to market and sell their badger by themselves, which really sucks for Nikolai because <laughs> um, that selling that and dealership networks is like that. That's destroyed many small companies. It's like, It'd be a lot better if they could say, we'll tap in your dealership network and allow them to sell the trucks on dealer lots, like, I don't know, around the corner, right? So, like, where the cheap used cars are, put the Badger over there. So, yeah, there, that is interesting. Interesting announcement. Market went crazy, as usual. And uh, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. Uh, all right. So, let me get caught up here. Elliot's here. Juan, of course, is here. We're talking with Juan. My server in Homestead is here. And uh, Brandon is here as usual, which is cool. Um, uh, we did have a good Labor Day. We went camping with the Honda Ridgeline, which, by the way, if it wasn't 40 ought nothing, I might do a video on that. And I'm currently thinking about doing a live stream tomorrow night as well. Uh, I have a GMC Sierra with the 3 liter Duramax in the AT4 package coming tomorrow. And I have a Honda Ridgeline outside. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a uh, which truck would you buy with both trucks. So let me know in the comments. I'm it's supposed to be 48 tomorrow, so woohoo, eight more degrees. So I'm gonna throw my stock cap on and, and freeze my butt off. But we may do that one just because I think it's interesting. And I would tell you this that the uh, some features of the Honda Ridgeline we use camping were pretty damn cool. And most everybody in the campground, there was 60 people there, the family camping ground, uh, all family, and we kept our distances. Um, they uh, all came over and checked it out. <laughs> it, was, it definitely got people's uh, attention. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. All right. So, uh, uh. 
The other thing that was interesting too was somebody pointed out on LinkedIn about the, the um, uh, Nikolai and GM thing was that Rivian, Ford and Rivian split. So is this just another like $2 billion partnership that's going to eventually just be split? Like once, once GM actually looks at Nick, uh, Nikolai's plans, I think they're like, well, screw that. They're out of here. Uh, I think that's pretty interesting too. Cause like GM's developing their own EV truck, the Hummer and the Hummer uh, SUV. And they're doing a Chevy one. They also have investment in Lordstown too. So I, I'm, Kind of wonder if they're just going to go in there and steal technology and run. Take the money and run. All right. So, well, Juan says Dodd needs this truck so they can keep making more Hellcat V8 cars and charge some boys. Okay, they find. Oh, yeah. There's a conversation about Dodge uh, Ram Ram um, having uh, Cafe Ping Cafe finds needing an EV partner, which is what um, people are speculating the Jeep 4 by e really is about. It's about the cafe numbers and uh, not paying the big fines. They paid like. $79 million in fines. Um, Sean is here. Uh, Elliot wants to know if they're a startup. Why not start making a vehicle that's guaranteed to make money, a compact crossover? What I thought was interesting with the Nikolai announcement was they're talking about how they're building uh, Class 7, Class 8 semi powertrains. So I need to do a little more research on Nikolai because I didn't think they built anything. Uh, let's see. Mark says, bad idea. Uh, hydrogen is 10 times more expensive than the battery EV. Hmm, it's interesting. I I like the hydrogen because of the fill up times. You can fill up, you can move along your life, you don't have to charge overnight. But there's infrastructure issues with hydrogen as there are B battery EVs as well. And uh, I'm just waiting to see which one comes out on top, but it could be another decade before that happens. It is interesting. Oh, the other story, that if you were on um, pickuptrucktalk.com, and I bring this up because Philip is on here. Uh, I don't know if you saw the story, but there was a guy in Bosnia who built a Tesla Cybertruck. He took a Ford Raptor and made a Cybertruck out of it. Like a group of like eight different IT guys and engineers got together and built this thing. And what cracked me up about it was that it's a Ford Raptor he converted into a Tesla Cybertruck, which is kind of goofy, right? Um, and that... He's a big Tesla fanboy. He's got tons of, he's got three different Teslas in the videos he's shooting, but that he can't get it uh, licensed, registered over there in Bosnia because it won't, the sharp edges of the truck won't pass the frontal crash testing for pedestrian testing, for killing, pest, pest, killing people. It kills people. All right. Let me say this more slowly and easily. It kills people. Done. The sharp edges, if you hit it with a car, you know, if you get hit with a car, you typically you, you fall back and then the front bumpers are made so that your head doesn't like like do like this just kind of goes back with a Tesla Cybertruck. It's like hitting a brick and just go. And so death, death, death. That's what gives it cause. So I thought it was pretty uh, interesting. I had to run a story right away. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, no. Uh, Christopher, is State Fair of Texas going to be canceled this year in 2020? It's already can't. I thought it was canceled. Uh, I am debating about going to Texas to do the short rodeo. There's a rumor about driving a new Ram truck down there, but I don't know. We'll see what works out. Uh, Mark Plop, GM will build the Badger with the worst team it has. <laughs> they might. They might. That could be their play, right? We're going to take your technology. We're going to study your stuff and, get, and build their truck poorly. Um, that's a very interesting idea. I'm thinking back while I was writing my story this morning that GM pulled their Corvette team over to the EV side. And those guys got all mad about it, which I would be too. I mean, if you're a, if you're a petrol loving fan, if you love the smell of gasoline in the morning and now they force you to go work on EV, it, it's not very exciting. And Mary Barra was talking about, and the CNBC I was watching about how exciting it is and how they're going forward their plans for future of all EVs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brandon says, I actually like to see Honda build an electric or hydrogen bridge line. Why not? It can sell. Can't sell worse than it does now. <laughs> it might sell more electric. Didn't, oh, didn't hear it. Uh, you can DC fast charge at 1,000 mile per hour at a V3 supercharger. Yeah, that's a lot of heat. Uh, Brandon, we have a hydrogen fuel station in my city in San Fran. It's actually pretty popular with Toyota and Honda hydrogen cars. I, I, like I said, I was pretty damn impressed with the um, hydrogen fuel saw semi road in, in California. And I'm overall impressed with EV technology. I mean, it, it works, right? 
the plugin plugin EV. I'm not a fan of that. I understand Jill and I did our conversation and 25 miles of range is cool for a lot of people in town and city like that, but I can't use it here. It doesn't work. It gets me across town and with the winds and such, it just destroys the battery. Um, so I, I don't really, that doesn't work for me. I don't, I don't want to charge a vehicle for four or five hours on 110 to go 20 miles. Not interested in that at all. Um, so, but I, so I, I like, again, I like the hydrogen fuel cell setup so you can just done, move along with life. Um, uh, Philip, think the Cybertruck will offset with a plastic crumple zone? The problem is the stainless steel. That's the problem. Stainless steel isn't going to crumble, and and that's the problem. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an inherent issue, right? So it's really, stainless steel is really strong, but automakers don't use it because it doesn't crumble, and it doesn't, and they can't pass the, the crash standards for not killing pedestrians. So it, it just, it kind of, I think somebody should have sat down with Elon and the guy's name, whatever the guy's name was, and just said, look, this doesn't work because of these clear factors. Like, I, and I don't understand why that was just so overlooked. It seems like it's um, common sense that was overlooked and it seems weird. Your county will not permit you to refill hydrogen at home. I don't want to refill at home. Uh, great for zombies. How many pedestrians are getting hit if car companies must alter the front end design of the vehicle? Actually, quite a bit. Uh, if you look at um, places like Britain and France, they've actually talked about banning the bull bars, the, the straight bull bars, because they have so many more pedestrian accidents over there than we do in the United States. We don't see it over here because we don't have the same driving situations. So we don't have the same pedestrian deaths they do like in Europe and different places. And so we, they want to, in those places, they want the bull bars to kind of fit around the vehicle. So it's shaped around the hood instead of being upwards. So remember, if you ever look at a semi, it's got three bar bull bars going up. Well, in Australia, that's great in the outback for um, uh, the kangaroos and such, right? So it doesn't damage the truck. But in the cities, they've been found that a lot of issues with, with pedestrian deaths because of that three bar system, right? It's physics, makes sense, right? Steel, hit the side of the wall, you're dying. And they're finding the same stuff in Europe. And so there's been a couple times over the years that the um, legislators have talked about creating laws to ban certain bull bar designs and to make them more curvy in a way. And so there is some of that conversation going on. Uh, and that's where it got me thinking about the uh, Cybertruck was that that same design is in the Cybertruck. So it seems like something is a miss there with that design. There's a, re you know, it, and there's a reason why trucks all look the same the reason why cars look the same. I mean, in the wind tunnel, uh, aerodynamics, uh, in the wind tunnel, make it, you know, you want better fuel economy. You got to make more curves, uh, pedestrian accidents, uh, crumble zones. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into this that make vehicles look more and more similar, which then makes people upset, right? Cause you want something more unique. That was a big draw with Cybertruck was it, it's so different. It's so unique and looks so much, so much better. And I think that that really stands out. And what's interesting is, it, again, if you go to pickuptrucktalk.com, you'll find the story with that uh, the guy in Bosnia built the Cybertruck. And there's a video I was able to embed from Instagram, and it's it's the Cybertruck driving around Bosnia, and it's clear how much it stands out against the other vehicles, how much different it is as it's driving around. And I I don't know what vehicles they have in Bosnia. I'm not so aware of the automotive market over there, but I think it's really interesting to see that truck drive around and see how much bigger it is. And what's interesting with that truck is they didn't make it as big as a Cybertruck. So because it's the F-150, they it's a little bit shorter and narrower. Uh, excuse me, I should say it's differently. Since it's a stock truck, it's narrower and shorter than a Cybertruck. The Cybertruck is actually really big. It's, it's like one and a quarter times bigger than the F-150. And so I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, da, 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 G, uh, all right, see. KB9 Oak, GM has gone way downhill. Chrysler's junk. GM is junk. Ford, meh. My guess man truck's Toyota. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, th that design has really, really turned people off in the GM trucks. I, I had a cousin just buy a new GMC Sierra 2500 um, truck in the SL, SLE, I think. Anyways, I'm doing a video on it um, pretty soon. And I will do that because it's he's a rancher, has 29 head of cattle. And so it's interesting to see his viewpoints. And he's six foot four or five. And him talking about getting inside the bed is really interesting. 
And for all you guys in your little short comments, you just wait. You wait till you see the video. Eat and crow, you will. All right, Grant says, what truck do you think has the best safety features? Hmm, okay. Some have good 360 cameras. Some are not so good, Titan. Some have lane assist that just gives you a warning and some keep you in the lane. Wow, that's a really good question, Grant. Uh, let's see. I would say not Chevy products because they got rid of adaptive cruise control, which I think is pretty much the standard these days. Uh, I have I like Ram trucks. I, I want to see if I have any problems. I don't recall having any issues with them. Although I will say Chevy trucks in the higher trim levels, all the cameras are pretty damn cool. And that's pretty safe. Um, blind spot monitoring is, is pretty much a, a standard thing these days. The better part with blind spot monitoring is when you get blind spot monitoring with trailer. And so you see all the way down the trailer as well and additional cameras. That's important. Um, I think Ford offers some pretty good things, but I, I want to say that the new, they're going to get ding for me because the new Ranger, the 2021 Ranger, 2020 Ranger, Jill just wrote about it. Sorry, I'm going through my brain here. Uh, does not have cruise control as standard. You actually have to pay extra for cruise control, which is kind of ridiculous. Toyota does a good job with theirs because their uh, Toyota Safety Plus system, that the, all the safety technology, is standard. They don't even charge extra for it, so it's pretty cool. Um, I like I like free. <laughs> I like free, you know, or built on vehicle price, whatever. I, I hate that the advanced safety technology is all part of packages, and you have to rely on the dealer to get the right package and all that stuff. That's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I would say Toyota offers it with all the bases good. I've had really good luck with Ram on safety features and having all the safety features. Uh, Ford does a solid job of safety features as well. I want to say they have everything that I could think about. And Chevy gets dinged because of that uh, depth cruise control, and the Ford Ranger would be the one caveat there without cruise control at all. So I think it's really interesting they did that. So there you go. That, without doing a deeper dive in that, that's about the best I can do off the top of my head. That's a really good question. Like, what is the safest half-ton truck in the market? That's a good Jill one. Jill loves those kind of stories. Uh, Tesla truck looks like an old electric razor anyways. <laughs> uh, and GM will get Honda to build it. Hey, right, long, right lane hog is here. Uh, yeah, so a week after they talked to Honda about doing more collaborations, they went after Nikolai. So, hmm. I think it's interesting. I, I, I don't know the I, I don't know enough about Honda to know the play. Although I was driving that Ridgeline around this week, thinking to myself, this Ridgeline could easily be rebadged as a Chevy Love. It'd be a perfect Chevy Love. It really what it is. And so you could make it just, you could do like a Raider cab version of it and maybe keep a six foot bed, right? And call it a Chevy Love. It would fit right below the Colorado because the Colorado is taller and a little bit, I think a little bit, maybe the same size cab, but you could make just a smaller version of that and, with that, you wouldn't expect very many sales. So there you go. My prediction, Honda Ridgeline becomes Chevy Love. You guys remember Love? Gotta feel love, it's a Chevy Love. All right, uh, 2020 LA Auto Show got canceled as well. I know. Moving to May, right between Detroit and New York Auto Show. It is gonna be crazy. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do next year. I, well, A, I hope things take off. Knock on wood, hope things go good. I was listening to a, a, a pharmaceutical companies today talking about this, but I'm hoping, hoping things get well. I'm hoping everything gets a vaccine or we get a drug or we get something. I'm hoping something comes out when these shows continue because that's an onslaught next year. And I've always told my wife, I said, when COVID becomes whatever and it goes away or solved or whatever they figure out, um, I'm going to be on the road a lot. <laughs> I'm going to be on the road a lot. So yeah, it's going to be crazy. Mm. EV Corvette. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? So an EV Corvette would be uh, electric power and demand. The biggest thing holding that thing back would be keeping the tires from spinning off the rims. Once they do that, that thing could be as fast as you want to be. And then to me, at, at some point, though, when you're heavy vehicle driving that fast, like, you know, Tesla's Model uh, S and things that can just, just takes off so fast. Um, to me, it's like, okay, well, it's about something else. I know Philip and I talked about this um, when we did our video is that you go fast for a while and it's cool and you show your friends and your mom hops in, you go really fast with your mom. But like he was talking about, it's not about the going fast with him. He enjoys so much. It's the um, safety features. It's all the safety features in the Tesla that makes it worthwhile for him that he can drive across the country and he can, he can relax. 
it's driver fatigue is down. And so I think you can get that other vehicles without having to go EV. But I mean, I agree. EV is nice. It's nice and quiet, nice and smooth. Uh, safety features. It's a nice ride. Um, I just, like I said in the video, I'm going to be really sad when EVs become everywhere and we lose the surreal experience of listening to the engine. And frankly, that's going away right now. Anyways, uh, GM's doing a lot more sound dampening. They're making the Duramax sound quieter. So everything's getting quieter. And Swede's outside with dual exhaust. <laughs> and I can't hear a damn thing when I'm driving Swede. Don't call me an answering. Uh, what was the hydrogen somehow you rode in really loud? I noticed the Nikolai demo was super loud. The funny story with this is that it wasn't loud at all. The only thing we'd hear was the compressor kicking on to turn on the AC. What they found, though, was that the build quality of the Kenworth wasn't up to par for Toyota in that when they took the Cummins, no, took the diesel engine out. I'm not sure if it's Cummins. I don't want to say a name here. When they took the diesel engine out of the Kenworth, the truck had so many rattles, they were just shocked. Well, as it turned out, the diesel was so loud, they didn't hear the rattles. And when we went pure EV, with their case hydrogen EV, you could hear all the rattles. And so they were like, we need some bushings, we need some sound dampening. They had to go back through that truck and make it quieter because they did not anticipate that after effects of what happened when they modified it. So it was very quiet. It was very smooth. Um, it, was, it was interesting, though. I, I learned a bunch doing that was that when you're riding in the, the fuel cell semi, you're riding a battery electric semi, whatever the case be, you're riding an EV, whether it's hydrogen or battery or whatever, um, those trucks have much faster 0 to 60 times than the de diesel versions, right? So on a, from a stop, they can just go faster. They showed a, totally showed a video of a diesel Kenworth versus a, their hydrogen Kenworth, and it was like, and this one's still sitting still. I mean, because that battery on demand is EV power, and EV power is right on, like flicking the light switch. It right there. There's your there's your power going off. But what the semi truck driver told me was that he never he's never going to drive like that because it's a cargo issue. So as soon as you take off the line, what happens? All your stuff in the back of the truck it goes flying to the back, right? And anybody that's ever done any fun, fast driving of their truck and the Raptors and things like that, they know that anything in the bed that's not secure and you can hit the gas like that, it's going to go flying towards the back. It's why they bolt down the wheels in the back of the Baja trucks because they go flying down the road if you don't bolt them down. And so the spare tires in the back of the bed, I mean. And the same thing with him. He's like, I'm not driving this hydrogen fuel cell faster. I know they tell me it can be driven faster, but I don't want to clean up all the cases of beer I'd destroy in the back or my cargo, whatever he's carrying, TVs and eggs or whatever is back there. He's like, I can't drive that fast. It's not about the truck not being able to do it. It's about the cargo in the back and whether I don't want that cargo to shift. I so said that was a really interesting point. Uh, Juan, do you bring the report by E needs to charge for 12 hours? Way too long. I don't know if it's 12, but it's maybe a long time. Brandon, largest utility company in California, PG&E, cut power to 172,000 customers from Monday to Wednesday this week. That doesn't work too well if you own an EV. Yeah, I... I've, I've heard that, and I'm, I, California's going through power outages. One of my other concerns with um, battery EVs, and, and, and again, I, I like them. I like them. I, I'm not trying to be a hater, but that our electricity grid is a problem in this country. Um, we've had some rolling blackouts for the years. We've had some issues with battery power being consistent, or battery power, electricity being consistent across the country. So um, as we move away from coal, which, hey, air is cleaner, or whatever you feel about that, that's what we're doing. I should say, I, I don't like the fact that coal workers are losing their jobs. I like the way our air quality is going up. So I don't know what to do there. But I will tell you this, that as we transition from coal to something else, that our electricity grid is really becoming a concern. And I've read a lot about this last, not read, I've, I've, I've been informed of, about this in Facebook conversations. I've been looking into it. In that if you look at some of the experts' warnings, there's a lot of concern about the grid. And as we move from gasoline to EVs, how are we gonna power these cars and keep the prices down? So now we're gonna take a system that's already at a peak of demand and add more demand to it. And that's where I think at some, some place, the argument that, that battery EVs are cheaper to drive on a monthly basis versus gasoline is going to be an interesting conversation to have 
as demand increases, pricing goes up. As pricing goes up, what works out? And I understand that most people charge at night when it's cheaper. I get all that. But all of electronics are now plugging in all the time. We are expecting more and more from the grid. And that's just going to increase pricing at some point. And with gasoline staying at $2 a gallon and vehicles getting more and more fuel efficient, fossil fuel vehicles getting more and more fuel efficient, if you will, I, I do wonder at what point does the math become kind of a weird place? Does the argument that, that EVs are cheaper to maintain or cheaper to, to own because of fueling go away? And then I also really have concerns about next five years. I think legislatures has to create a separate taxing situation for uh, battery EVs to pay for the roads. So if you're not paying for gas and you're still driving on the roads, kind of cheating. Kind of cheating. Uh, Joe, guess who didn't forget about the live stream this time? <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. By the time people turn to 4 by e in the mall, probably will only get a few miles electric range. Yeah. Uh, right? And and I think that's I think that's a very valid argument. So what I thought was interesting is Jeeps are one of the most modified vehicles out there. So it's Jeeps and trucks, right? And so if you get a Jeep and you put bigger tires on it and you lift it and it's a four by E, you're just destroying the whole purpose of that vehicle. And so I, I, I'm curious to see, it's like, it's like taking a Tesla Model S and adding a lift kit and tires to it or the Model Y or the, oh, the Gullwing doors, the SUV one. And so I don't understand. Um, I, I, I think I, I will understand customers wanting to do that, but I think there'll be certain customers that will learn, there'll be a learning curve with this four by E on uh, whether or not you can do that stuff. And again, Joe brings up good points is that, you know, in the city environment, it's perfect around town, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it's a perfect solution. Um, I do wonder how many people in cities own garages. So there's a whole argument there, but I, I think it's interesting. It's, it's just a very interesting place to be in the marketplace. Uh, you think 2021 will be canceled. What's up, Ahmad? A separate truck trunk is one giant crumple zone. I wish it was. Mark, I'm not a, I'm not a anti cyber truck, but it's not. And that is not a crumple zone because of stainless steel materials. Stainless steel doesn't crumble. And they took the sledgehammer to that thing, and that just showed the problems with safety. Like that, you know, when Franz, I think it's Franz. Wasn't it Franz? The guy's name was Franz. When Franz took a sledgehammer and beats the side of that truck, that just screams a problem. When you hit that driver's side door, I was thinking, oh, my God. Uh-oh. That's a big issue. Uh, jaws of life. You get trapped in your vehicle. How do they cut you out? How does that crumble in an accident? You know, like my 62 is a solid steel truck in the exterior. If I get in an accident, it's going to hurt. I ain't going to hurt the truck. It's going to hurt me big time. Why? Because things are going to bounce into the truck. The energy from the crash isn't going to be absorbed in the crumble zone. It's going to go into my body. So <laughs> I, I, I can ask him a sweet. It's going to hurt. And it, it does hurt. If you ever seen a video of the Camry versus the Bel Air, it hurts. Those vehicles hurt. And he does it. So that's why I'm very cautious <laughs> when I drive them around because I, it's just, and that's the same thing with the Tesla Cybertruck is like the, the stainless steel is just a, a wrong material choice. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do to change that. I, I can't, I can't wait for the testing to go on. I can't wait for the uh, nits of the test and crashing. I can't wait for the federal motor vehicle standards to look at that vehicle and give a true answer. Cause I think automakers are interested too. Automakers are like, Hey, if we can do something different, awesome, let's do it. But for decades, you told us we couldn't. And so I think it's going to be really, really, really interesting. What's going to happen. Uh, if all the auto shows groups are closely together in middle 2021, they will not be that exciting. Manufacturers are not going to release anything new. They are not. They're not going to release anything new. Automakers are currently challenging themselves on how they release vehicles. My job is, is changing completely. I don't know what my future looks like as far as going to events and going to shows and stuff like that. It's just going to be interesting. Uh, let's see. Hydrogen is all the rage back in the early 2000s. Operating temps are very high beyond the comments of cost-effective production. Yep. Yeah, and there's real concerns with hydrogen, real concerns. But I think from, and this is where I, what I think it's going to win, is I think when you do look at things from a commercial standpoint, uh, to me, the adoption of battery electric vehicles isn't based on consumer demand. 
consumers haven't really changed the world in many different ways. It's, and especially a, a market like this, it's commercial demand. Commercial demand has the buying power of, of fleets of semis, uh, government, um, whatever industry that you're looking at, I think from, from automotive industry that if you can get the commercial operations to buy into an alternative power train, whether it's battery V, whether it's hydrogen, whether it's biofuels for diesel, whatever the case is, if you can get the commercial side of the business to buy into that and start buying that in bulk, I think those um, economics of scale will reduce costs for consumers. And I think until semi trucks, drive around with battery electric configurations, I don't think it's gonna happen. Now, I think battery electric configurations work great for like the mailman. The mailman could drive a battery truck all day long, uh, short haul trucking battery all day long. But I think in a long-term situation, long distance travel, I think hydrogen is faster to keep the vehicle going. You're not losing the time for charging. And they've, they've done their stuff. I've seen uh, stories where they've tried to like make the battery swappable. They've tried to do fast charging at different places along the way. It's just, it's, it's just interesting. So, but again, I think I was covering the, the, the hydrogen semi four or five years ago now, I think it is. And there's still nowhere closer to being production. So we're probably still 10 years from that. And we're still, you know, I get to start, talk, start talking about this stuff. And now in terms of, Will it happen in my lifetime? That's where I'm looking at stuff because I just haven't seen it. And I look at the global trends. I just look at the global trends for EV sales. EVs were down last year globally, and uh, there was a uh, there's a there's a survey or not a survey, but there was a study I was reading. EV sales are down globally, and they're not looking like the forecast is to grow much more globally. You're still looking at I think it's three point four percent of the global market is EVs, and that's pretty low and that's and, and that's in the united states i think it's like one or two percent of the market and tesla looking at the sales so far still leads the way it's still i mean tesla still kicks everybody's butt in ev sales but i don't know that they are kicking butt in a way that's meaningful for the amount of change people think that musk is going to bring the marketplace i hope I, I hope i'm wrong i i like clean clean skies everybody else i like you know, clean air. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I haven't, I just haven't seen the numbers play out in a way that, that I get excited about as much as the people do. And maybe they will, maybe they will, maybe it'll completely come out and be a lot better. And, and maybe people are excited about it. Um, I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I, I and I have yet talked to a Jeep Wrangler owner who's a fan of the four by E either. And so I think it's, I, I just, I'm curious. I'm just curious, curious person, journalist. Sorry, guilty as charged. So I just want to see what's going to happen. Uh, let's see. Brandon, I would say Tundra is least safe, Ram, most safe, based on a combination of safety features and crash test results. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, if you look at the safety features, Tundra offers the most, or offers a lot based on standard. The crash testing is such a BS because NHTSA continuously pushes the bar on crash testing. And that truck hasn't been changed in 2007. So, of course, over the years, it's going to go down and crash test safety ratings because it's an old design and newer tests have been developed that are going to show different things. And, and like the frontal crash awareness test, um, it's where the, like a, a, a concrete pillar is placed at, along the side and your front end hits it, like the front right side or front left side. You remember the controversy a couple of years ago when Ford did wheel blockers to stop the wheel from coming into the cab from that frontal crash avoidance on the sides, but they only did it on the crew cabs. <laughs> so, so there's all these things in crash testing that's interesting. A guy told me once a long time ago, he says, you know, if they don't create more tests to challenge us and to downgrade our trucks, then NHTSA and IIHS are not doing their jobs. Mm. Pretty good argument. I think the takeaway is, is that trucks have become safer than ever. Uh, is that base fleet ranger is, that is on the lots anyways? No, that was a that was a cruise control that was not standard and it was just on the ranger. That, that was interesting. Most trucks still do not have cruise control standard regular cruise control. That is really interesting. Uh, I would think that they should. And look at that, Brandon's already thinking about an article. 
Uh, Riley, is everyone allowed to go to the Turret Auto Show? Okay, so uh, how it works is that all uh, people are able to go to shows, right? So you're able to attend auto shows. Journalists have special days we go. So we go non-public days, and there's press conferences and stuff on those non on those non-public days. And so I don't ever see anybody like fans and stuff because I'm always leaving when they get entrance in the show. That's how that's typically how it works. Is the Ford Ranger Ranger Raptor will have trailer backup assist in future in, in, to the G oh, the U.S. Um, I there, there's been conversations about the Ranger Raptor and Ranger Tremor. I think that when the Ranger goes on a global platform, like they're talking about doing, I think we'll see the Ranger Raptor over here because why not offer it if you're already going to build on the common platform? I think that's what's holding that thing back. Um, I, I think they could do more in that segment, but I. And I think what's interesting is that the mid-size truck segment is one of the fastest growing segments in the market. Uh, Full-size trucks have basically kind of cooled off. They're still selling well, but as far as growth, mid-size trucks are still growing faster at a faster rate than full-size truck sales. So I, I do think that there's room for that truck to come. Um, I, I just don't know that Ford wants to muddy the waters with the Raptor hitting you ads full-size and doing a mid-size version too. You know, if you have this Halo truck, do you try to expand the halo truck offerings or do you keep it just halo truck right so if the ford raptor was offered globally and then the the ford ranger raptor is offered globally then i could make the argument both ways but it's gonna be interesting to see what ford decides to do you know they are going to go to a multi-truck strategy and that's what they're heading towards especially with like a bronco truck as well i don't know that there's enough demand i would love there to be enough enough demand I'd love for electric trucks to take off. Love for other trucks to take off. Love for those segment of all the electric trucks. And I can tell my car and driver guys like, that's good. You know, I told you I was right. But let's be realistic here. How many trucks, trucks aren't for everyone. And uh, just like cars suck. I mean, cars aren't for everyone. And so I, I don't know that the market is going to be that large to be able to handle that much demand. That's going to be a, a, a good question. So that's what they look at as well. The ZR2 has done pretty well for, for Chevy. It's something to look at. The Gladiator, I would argue, hasn't done as well as maybe people thought it was going to. Going to, so, hmm, be interesting. Uh, Paul Beam, he says, "Hey Tim, do you know why GM dropped adaptive cruise control, having his, his safety issues with it?" No, they. Uh, it wasn't a safety issue thing. It was a decision they made. They literally looked at the truck when it came out, nineteen. I think it was 2019. Brandon's like all over this. He's going to tell me I'm right or wrong. Um, he's going to, that they said they don't think their customers wanted it. And we said, even if you offer it as an options package, just an options package. And then it was a year later and they offered it again. So I believe it's on the newer, uh, it should be on the newer trucks. I, that was one of the press conferences, press that I thought I read, as they're adding it back in after consumers are like, WTF. So I thought, it's just a really interesting play by GM. But they basically said, no, we're not, interest not interested. Uh, Tesla or Nikola stock made. So I had Nikola stock today. I made $3. It was cool. I didn't realize it took me two days to get my uh, settlements done. I'm playing around the stock market. Um, the Detroit Auto Show canceled. Yep. Snow by you today. No, later on. They're talking about later on. We had some flakes earlier, but uh, later on. Cybertruck is fugly. Yes, it is. I'm not a big fan of design. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the design and the argument for function of the truck. It doesn't seem like it makes sense to me. Uh, I think Ram is going to be number one in the market. Now, the parking lot in my work, I see Ram all over the place. I see them all over the places. It used to be F-150. I think Ram is definitely making a strong play. I, they, I think they're going to have an issue with um, capacity. I think they have to build some more capacity in their plants to be able to meet Ford's large lead. But if I was Ford, I'd be nervous. Ram is just building an incredible truck, and their quality is going up. If they keep that damn quality going up, they're going to be almost unstoppable. Uh, Elliot, had to do a quick Chevy Google search for the Chevy Love. Ha! <laughs> I thought you guys something new. It either looks just like a bridge line. It does. If you get, I mean, I don't think that was a double cab they built back then. I think it was just a regular cab, but yeah. Will the Ford Ranger Raptor have the Power Boost HO? I, I can't see it. The price point on that would be 60, 65,000. 
Um, I don't get why electric every electric prototype has to be some massive lifted off road edition. It's totally practical for EVs. I agree. I agree. Uh, Tesla Model Three performance is the fastest production car that ran up Mike's picks peak. They're fast, Mark. They're they're a fast car. I know people that love them because of their speed. And I think if you've driven, if you go from like a Camry to it, or you go from like a sedan to it, you're blown away by the performance. They are a really fast car. Fifty for life, uh, Connor. Drive a twelve valve Cummins. People do get mad. It's so loud. <laughs> yeah, I can see people get mad. My uh. Uh, wife's cousin, he's got a three-quarter ton Ford with a flatbed with, I'm going to guess it's a nine-inch stack coming out of the bed. And uh, he woke up early to the campground this weekend. He was not people's favorite person. <laughs> so I went over and I checked him out. and uh, I should do a video on it. it but he, he he just bought it. He didn't do anything to it. But it is, it is pretty interesting. I was going to do a video while I was there at the campground, but I was camping, damn it. And I didn't look so great on camera, probably. I had to do a big trim job today to be on camera, trust me. It was uh, pretty nasty. All right. Uh, I'm not saying that Matthias is dead. It's not going to happen. Uh, what was what was your favorite Chevy Serata commercial? Oh, the Like a Rocks. I always did like the Rocks. Like a Rock. What's interesting is the last three Chevys I've been in, uh, the um, Like a Rock song comes on by Bob Seeger on the radio. Anytime else, it never comes on. I think. Chevy's giving Sirius a little bit of extra dough, and they're making that happen. All right, I like to watch baseball. The fake fan noise this year just isn't the same as real thing. Just like fake engine noise it doesn't cut it. I agree. I, so football is back on Thursday. Maybe interesting in football on Thursday. I'm curious about the uh, no fans. Like, remember when um, Peyton Manning would do that in the Colts stadium? And quite the fans down. It was just such a different game. So I'd be interesting. Uh, Elliot, I think they're trying to attract the list of truck crowd because they know those types of truck customers. Shop players would not consider any EV vehicle. Uh, what, what I would like to see is I would like to see um, an EV truck, a, a Silverado with an EV powertrain. That's it. Nothing fancy, nothing unique, nothing different. Just swap out the things. You know, you can take the grill and maybe cover it because you don't need the the fan. You don't need the airflow in for the, the battery. That's fine. But just make it normal. And why? I I, got, I drove a, a Nissan Leaf a couple years ago. Why has it got to be so weird? Why has it got to be so weird? I, I guess that's part of the appeal. But as an appeal for uh, consumers across the world, everyday consumers should say differently. For the appeal for everyday consumers, it just is funky. It's just funky. Not funky, calm Medina, but just funky. Uh, oh, yes. I do remember that. The photo with the guy in the glove box tells a shot to fix it. He sees his son in a rearview mirror. Reminds him of the time with his father. That was a good one. That was a... Excuse me for a minute. Yeah. it's a good one. Uh, if they are least likely to buy EV, then why target those customers? Why the F customers? Jesus. These guys are going crazy. Uh, glad the NBA did a bubble. I mean, even golf is weird. Uh, Philip, I agree about electrical grid concern. The leadership isn't being proactive, and you're seeing reactive symptoms in places like Cali. I think that's an underreported story, Philip. I wish to pay, by the way, a mile for road tracks. I think we should change the way, yes. I think we should change the way we're taxing for road tax and make it easier. Taco Tuesday. We're actually having soup tonight. Sorry. No soup for you. Uh, it's 40 degrees and cold as hell, so soup is on the, the menu. But I will be doing Taco Tuesday. Next week's supposed to be 95 degrees. Woohoo! I got a new golf club today, so you know what I'll be doing. My bag's over there. It's a, it's a, it's a good time. All right. Uh, and then I was, I actually was planning out my pheasant hunting this year, too. Uh, Chevy Colorado, you know what you want. You know you want a truck commercial camping. It's way underrated. Those commercials put a smile on face every time I saw them. Be cool post of commercials. Uh, California is adding three Tesla Mega Pack power plants in NB. Switch is adding Mega Pack to the NB grid. But so that's the question, Mark. So if they're adding that much power packs to the grid, oh, so they're adding. Yeah, they're adding more power. Yeah, so that that's gonna be thing. It's gonna be yeah, yeah. So here we go. Interesting. Take away the oil tax, pay once a year, and the registration costs. 
Oh, there's some going on. Any news about the new Tundra power plant? Ramesh wants to know. I want to say that it's going to keep the V8, but I keep getting told no and no and no. So the situation is it's going to be a twin turbo V6 engine. Whether that's hybrid or not, still up in the air, but that's what they're talking about. They're talking about there will be no 5.7 liter V8 in the new Tundra, and I just think it's a bunch of bull, but that's the news. If, the, if I were to report anything, I'd report that news. Engine knock fixed for 2019 Titan. Yeah, just put thicker weight oil in there. Uh, let's see, I pay a week. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I learned anything about the engine knock in the, in the Titan. Uh, at, when I was a kid, when the engine knock, you just poured the heavy grade of oil in there and took care of the knock. Well, you couldn't hear the knock anymore, so it was problem fixed. Like duct tape fans. Duct tape fixes lots of problems. Just cover the bitch up. <laughs> Uh, Brandon, I pay away every year for my registration as it is. My truck is under 6,000 GBWR. Hmm. Uh, 3.5, yeah, twin turbo. That's what they're talking about. Uh, I like the YouTube live stream releases that Ford and Ram did this summer. I, I do and I don't. I like the fact that you guys got the news along with I got the news, but it really is hard for me to make a story up and cover something unique when everybody's getting the same spoon-fed information. And I think you guys saw the contrast in those live streams. Uh, what we see as journalists, Ford cannot do a press conference. Just boring. Ram does a good one. But, yeah, so you guys have seen the same stuff we're doing. Um, it, but like I said, it is, it is difficult to get your questions answered and in, interview people and get unique stories when you're just seeing it digitally. Like I did behind-the-scenes Zoom um, videos on both those announcements. And I'm glad I did. I got a little more information but nothing unique. I couldn't sit in the seats. I couldn't walk around. I couldn't give you an idea of the size. It just, it didn't work for me. Mm. Uh, Mod does not want to go electric. He doesn't want to profit Elon. No way. Charge us that. Oh, there's arguments going on. They had some journalists at the new Mercedes S-Class. Hmm. Elliot's right. So, the other thing you didn't know was that Subaru had an event for something or other, and they flew journalists in, or they drove whatever, in Indiana in these tree houses that were literally 40 feet away in tree houses. So one journalist per vehicle. There is some conversation in industry about doing that. Automakers need to get the vehicles out, start talking about things. And so there's been conversations. There's ongoing conversations about me going to Texas because of that, because of some changes there. It's a very fluid situation, and every month we have what we call a Lipnitz test, where we have a poll where we all answer whether or not we're willing to travel. I am willing to travel because I feel like it's safer on a plane than it is in Walmart, <laughs> frankly. And if I can go to Walmart with 500 people in the store or whatever in the area and all day long, why not get on the plane? And so I'll wear my mask. No problem. I'll, I'll put it on. No big deal. I'll sanitize my hands. Absolutely. Um, give me the hand sanitizer right now. I'll do it. No problem at all. I just want, I just, I need to travel folks. I'm getting to the point where it's, I'm making my own trips up my head. I'm going to Sioux Falls a couple weeks as a drive. I'm, I, I need to travel and to do this job, to go see things and to go do reporting on stuff and bring you unique content. And this is the new normal. And that's what this virus is. And it's nasty. We just had an uncle that had, got COVID and he was down for a whole week and he had a really hard time and he's still having a hard time with it. So it's a nasty virus. I'm not arguing that at all, but if this is a new normal, then let me do my new normal. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Compares to compare battery electric semi with CH2 costing a thousand dollars per fill up. You're right, Mark. It, hydrogen is expensive. It is. Um, so there'd be some interesting conversations that are going to happen with that. Uh, the, the, the one thing that they found at the Long Beach Pier when I was down there at Long Beach and Los Angeles port system when I was down there was that they tried battery electric. The downtime killed them. The downtime made them have to buy two semis for the cost of one, and that really hurt them. So that's why Toyota's hydrogen fuel cell was um, given additional grant 
by the California Air Board to create more trucks because the, it's the downtime that's a real concern. Mm. So why are people rushing to make an EV if, if sales are so low? I don't know. I've asked that a few times. I don't get anything else. So what's up with the GM thing? Oh, Groot. Groot is in the place. Uh, GM is investing $2 billion into Nikolai. They're going to use, they're going to put their batteries and their hydrogen systems in the Nikolai pickup and they're going to build that truck. Now, what's Nikolai get out of it? They get expertise from manufacturing. They get experience for validating their vehicles. They get a lot more safety, a lot more uh, testing done of different uh, um, systems they have. Plus, they have a tried and true hydrogen or battery electric option from GM. So it's an interesting partnership. But it'll be interesting to see what happens as far as uh, how well they sell because they are not investing and letting Nikolai use any of the dealerships at all. Nikolai will still have to market and sell the Badger on their own. And GM gets EV credits. So it's interesting. It is interesting. Uh, let's see. I agree with you, Tim. I worked at the crash test facility in the past. Yeah, they're always trying to make it harder. Hardest part of the safety testing for trucks now is the headlights. It'll always be something. They're always going to change it up. Ford and 50 is going to have a lot of safety features. They're going to be standard features. I, I think more and more safety standard is going to be awesome. I'm sucks. I'd like to meet you. So if I'm in town somewhere, I always hook up for a beer. But uh, yeah, auto shows, you can't really. I'm never there for public days. Heard rumors of the Ford Maverick. Yeah, I've heard rumors too. I have a video on this channel. It keeps progressively getting comments. And it's from a unibody truck video I did in the early Ford Maverick. Uh, Ford Maverick is coming next year. It'll be Ford Maverick, uh, Ford Ranger, Ford Bronco truck, Ford F-150, and then Super Duty. Five different trucks in Ford coming pretty soon. Um, yeah, so we're, we're getting there. I haven't seen, you know, if, as, Elliot, as Brandon says, if I remember correctly, I'm telling you, there's so much news right now. If I remember correctly, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Um, I was told that's funny. <laughs> Is the Ford Ra Ranger Raptor will be available at step side tailgate borrowed to the F series? Uh, I don't, again, we got to see some information. Uh, Paul, <laughs> okay, thanks. Electric van market might actually be larger than the electric pickup market. I agree. Uh, we had a hydrogen semi for testing back in 06, 07. I worked for an OEM then. Yeah, they keep trying it. it it's really, when I was doing the, the Toyota thing, it wasn't a matter of making it work. It works. It's, it's, it works. The um, Toyota Mirai works. It works. It's just a matter of how to lower costs and how to increase infrastructure. And how does that work? I read electric van, electric truck. I, I think electric truck makes a lot of sense. Uh, did not cruise in 20, but added in 2020. Oh, I was right. Uh, Ford makes too many trucks for envy number one. CP4 is failing on a 2019 Ram 3500 Cummins. Wow. The CP4 is failing on that one. God. That fuel pump, Bosch is just under fire. Uh, what the hell is weather doing by you? I heard Ford went 100 degrees of snow today. How? Yeah, we had 104 on Sunday, 80 yesterday, and then like snowing tonight. Offset barrier test. Exactly. That yes, not frontal. I think frontal is how they crashed, but yes, offset barrier. I'm getting I'm getting caught up here. No NFL for me. Uh there was some college. I want to see what the college is doing. Uh yes, yeah, same one. Brandon or Tim, most BEV fans are also anti-mining. Most mining lithium with diesel equipment, making the earth look like Mars. It's good for the environment. There's some questions that they're building it. I know uh Toyota's working on a new battery technology without mining lithium they're working on some ideas but, but yes there's a lot of problems with that uh twenty thousand to fix yeah the cpr is expensive christian auto builds ugly evs because they're praying no one buys them <laughs> they could be a normal like you is best way to feel the ev skeptics i guess i hate you hate soup uh my mom loves soup what is the soup conversation what's uh what do you think the best truck of 2020 so far it's a ram any any ram truck i've driven has been the best so far Mustamaki looks good in the crew. Ram, Ram, Ram. Love to see a midsize Ram soon. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to see one. I think the Gladiator was the midsize version you're looking for. I'm going through these comments fast because it's soup time. Tundra EcoBoost. Yep, the blind leading the blind. How is Swede doing? Wants, wants to know. Um, I uh, I haven't started Swede for a little bit. He's got a puddle under his uh, truck right now. It's probably the antifreeze. Can't fix that damn problem. But uh, yeah, I've been driving for a while. I've been busy driving all sorts of stuff. Turn the radio up, also fix the engine knock. <laughs> it 
that's uh, most EVs have that fugly shape because it's most efficient design. No, I mean inside the cabin, Elliot. When you do the shifter for the the Leaf and the Prius, it's got a weird shifting knob. Like, why is it gotta be so weird? Uh, is Toyota going to bring back Tundra TRD Pro Tundra third generation in 2022? I believe so. Why wouldn't they make that money? Tim, Tim, question: Why doesn't TFL do live streams anymore? I miss TFL truck with Kent. It is due to COVID. They can't be in the same facility he has. And he has been very reluctant to do Zoom together. From what I can tell, they just don't do Zoom very much. They could have done Zoom stuff, and they just, I think it worked out well for him. <laughs> New color for the TFL. Uh, they have been cracking hydrogen with wind turbines even here in, on PEV, PEY, Tim. And I mean, a decade ago, I think that's the best. That's the way it's going to eventually, instead of the BV stuff. Yeah, it's um, the Na National Renewable Energy Lab in Colorado, outside of Boulder, is working on different ways to do hydrogen. You can do it from wind, you can do it from water, clearly, and you can do it from, um, they're working on something really interesting. It's from uh, cow manure, and splitting it from cow manure, also natural gas. And with natural gas running across the country, it's pretty easy to get infrastructure to be built fast. But from cow manure, it's pretty interesting. Oh, thanks for the wedding, Brad. Um, so I was thinking that you could actually have a farmer who could have his tractors and his truck all running off hydrogen that he gets off the back end of the cow. Think about a renewable energy plan at the farm. Things are actually, I've heard of zero pilots. Jeez, I'll come back here. Planes are actually pretty safe. Elliot says, I've heard of zero pilots and flight tents getting sick. I was on a plane in Michigan in July, and it was as safe as I've been in a while. I, they are really on top, but United has done a good job, in my opinion. And so I think it's interesting. Not a fan of standard safety features pushes the price base price too high. It does increase price. It does. You saw spy shots of a 450 with a wooden tailgate. They are trying to compete with Ram GMs. Yeah, Ford's working on something. I've seen them too. I don't want to buy them yet because there's nothing definitive. Yeah. Tim, the TSS and my Tundra saved my life. Good. Yeah. And that safety equipment, I'm telling you, is a really uh, good thing. As trucks have gotten larger, it's gotten really larger. Uh, good evening, Kelly. Kelly, I'm just about done, buddy. I'm sorry that you missed it. Uh, a great dinner. I had cutouts like barn doors. Yep. Small overlap. God, that's right. It's a small overlap offset test. Can't remember that one. It's tough for everyone. Yeah, the wheel blockers were interesting, and Ford took a lot of crap about that, as they should. Uh, from water, they can crack one. So, okay, some water from the water, they can crack it from wind energy, energy, hydroelectric, nuclear, any alternative energy to crack water and hydrogen. They can do a lot with that. It, it's just a matter of price and demand. And again, like, like I said earlier, I think whatever way the commercial market goes is the way consumers will see the benefits from economics of scale. If you get a, f a fleet of semi trucks that drive hydrogen only across this country, you'll see stations going in across the routes are going in, right? It's going to go like that spread out, but it just depends which way they go. It depends which way they go. Oh, thanks Kelly for the five bucks. I'm sorry you missed the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, if they can keep, if commercial can build it and, and benefit from it, you'll see it spread battery EVs, same way. If they build uh, semis have routes from, Alabama to Michigan and they're running on battery EV, you'll see supercharger stations all along the way. I, that's what I think is going to happen. And so I'm just waiting to see which way commercial goes because they could do a lot with improving that. And like I said, with range, as Kelly mentions, range, range, range. I like the fact with the hydrogen, it's the same refueling time as it is with battery EV. That's one of the things the batteries are going to have trouble with is it's not the fact that you can run for few, less money and it, you know whatever uh, long term. It's that the downtime is going to cost these guys. Paying a truck driver to sit at a truck stop for eight hours while his truck charges is not going to help anybody. It's not going to work. So that's what it is. Lots of water around to make hydrogen and uh, natural gas too. They can do it there. So it's pretty interesting. All right, guys. It is soup time for me. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for being part of the channel. It is a great time. I enjoy doing these. Email me at Tim at pickuptrucktalk.com. Any questions, comments, concerns, uh, whether you hate me or not, uh, let me know. I like reading them. I do, even the hate ones. Mm. Oh, and last thing, Toyota won't do a classic because they don't have enough production capacity. Always been production capacity limited. So uh, enjoyed it. As always, we'll see you guys, I think, tomorrow. I think we should do the 
the uh, 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 GMC Duramax versus the Honda Ridgeline tomorrow. Ooh, I'll do it. I'll fire it up. Let me get the trucks here and get one clean. All right. See you guys. As always, I'll see uh, you down the road.